Hi, my name is Victor and you're with Revit Experiments. Today I'm going to show you how to make this pattern in Revit without adaptive components and without Dynamo. But before that, just a little bit of a backstory context. So I spent one semester as an Erasmus student in Bordeaux, France which is, uh, by the way, to this day, one of my favorite cities. It's a lovely place, a, a lovely place to study architecture as well. And that's when and where I heard uh, about Rudy Ricciotti for the first time. So apparently it's a famous French uh, architect and he's He's quite a character, actually. Um, I had the chance uh, to attend two of his lectures, one of them in Bordeaux and the other one, surprisingly, in Sofia, Bulgaria, about an year after I finished my Erasmus um, exchange thing there. And this guy, Rudy Ricciotti, if you haven't heard of him, like, check him out, check his buildings, they're really interesting. So what what was interesting was that um, the architecture students were really admiring him. And uh, the university professors, they despised him in a way. And Rudy Ricciotti has vocalized uh, his um, feelings towards minimalism. He doesn't like minimalism. He likes uh, buildings to be beautiful. He likes to say that he wants to make, he likes concrete and he wants to make concrete sexy in his words. So check him out. He's uh, really quite a character. Like if James Bond and Salvador Dali had a child, it wouldn't quite be like Rudy, but uh, he's kind of similar. So here you can see the guy. And you can also see that most of these pictures now I have Google through the Ricciotti are with him and this particular building. So that's why I decided how uh, to show you that one, these panels. So these panels are really like uh, this, the Musée de Civilisation d'Europe et de Méditerranée which means uh, the Museum of uh, European Civilizations and Mediterranean Civilizations, apparently, in Marseille, Marseille in France. I'm not sure how to pronounce Marseille in English. Anyway, uh, this is really rich this site, and if we go to museums, museums uh, we can see um, this building here. Uh, we can check a few others. You can see that there is uh, in his style this treatment of concrete and making inter interesting organic shapes out of concrete. And let's check his other buildings here. So here you can see this bibliotech, uh, this library. Uh, again, similar character, different in a way. I don't know if this was uh, realized. Because this, these here are renderings, as you can see, and this doesn't really seem to optimized to be built. Uh, but it could be, it's not a huge problem. Here you can see uh, this interesting concrete openings on the facade. And I have to say I have been influenced as a student by his architecture. Uh, I find it beautiful, you know, beauty is a subjective topic, but I find it beautiful. And here again, you can see these organic concrete shapes. And I have a very similar thing to this one in my latest course on curtain walls. 
but what I'm going to talk here is uh, mostly uh, that building and these panels and why I decided to talk about that now when I was learning about Rudy Ricciotti I had already played a lot with adaptive components in Revit and I had about a year of um, on and off experience with uh, Dynamo and my first instinct when I saw these buildings are yeah I can use Dynamo or adaptive components to achieve these shapes and we can certainly use adaptive components and or Dynamo um, to do them but we don't need to because these are actually repeated uh, panels which are the same and the curtain walls are good enough for them now adaptive components are really cool I really love them uh, but they are heavy so when we can avoid using adaptive components we better avoid it if we can use a curtain wall or a curtain system instead of using adaptive component it's gonna be better it's gonna be more lightweight in the project the file is gonna be smaller and also it's more likely that your colleagues know how to use curtain walls but don't know how to use adaptive components and yeah so why is it uh, that we can actually do this with curtain walls well the overall shape the shape of um, this facade has uh, the character of a Voronoi diagram and if I type in Voronoi diagram here you can see uh, it is a mathematical mathematically uh, described sh shape or uh, form f forming factor to a shape and I'm going to create another video solely on the topic of Voronoi diagrams and uh, they're used in architecture and design it's pretty much the logic of how shapes or bubbles are filling in uh, the space it's really interesting so this shape uh, of the um, let me close this this shape has this character but if it was a real Voronoi diagram that would mean that all these are going to be different in the project and this is uh, making things more expensive and more difficult to build and even when we are working on a loose budget we still need to think about buildability and cost so this is actually I, here I have typed through the Ricciotti pattern and again it's showing this building it's probably his most famous one and here we can see that these are repeated panels and I can encircle that or enclose it in a rectangle actually for you so you can see here we have this um, cut where the two panels are touching and it's repeating down so it's uh, about something like this that's the panel that is repeated and it's made as a repeated pattern so if you have ever uh, used uh, AutoCAD patterns or have modeled patterns in Revit you know like this is the seamless pattern so here you basically have to have the same repeated thing here and yeah that's it you can see you can see that if uh, if you follow this curve here you have the same thing here below because it's the same module and 
that's how we can make this as a curtain panel in Revit. So let's uh, go to Revit. And this is actually the example of uh, the panel from my course. Uh, and yeah, actually I recently released this course on uh, curtain walls, curtain systems and slope glazings. And it's a good six hour long course on this single topic in uh, on Udemy. So I'm going to share with you um, discount code. You can find it in the description of this video. And the course is really good and it's really worth it. Like there are courses out there that uh, tell you that uh, you can learn all of Revit in six hours, but no. So this is um, a course dedicated to curtain walls, curtain systems and slope glazing. And this is from there. So here I'm actually going to start with making a new panel. New family. I use the metric system, but you know it's the same with um, the imperial. And here you have the adaptive components uh, template, which is not what we need. We need the curtain wall panel. Why do I say adaptive component? Because adaptive components are pretty much the same. There are very few differences between adaptive components and curtain panel pattern based. They're pretty much the same thing, but here we need the curtain wall panel. And we do it like this. And I go to the exterior. So, you know, this is the left, this is the right side, and we have to put our panel here. And of course we can just make some dimensions check what's going on and this is fairly big right now I would like to I would like to make this smaller like this and also four meters maybe around three something like that and in the course I'm going to explain you how to make these panels stretch and scale with the wall but here I don't really have time for that so I'm just going to show you how to make that shape in the panel well when we do have a picture like this we can actually use it so I can grab that screenshot and yeah this is uh, this picture is not licensed but i'm just using it here for demonstration purposes so that should be all right but if you want to use this picture go to alami.com and yeah i'm going to save that portion of it and say pattern but this is optional like we don't need to do this and I'm not really going to trace over it exactly but I'm showing you that if we want to model the exact same shape that it is there we can go to Revit and we can import that image here we get the message which says that the image is not going to be visible in the project but that's okay and I'm going to go to the desktop where I saved it and I'm going to select the pattern, which is the name. So you can see that the proportions are different and we can start with these proportions. So let's say we want to make that like this. And actually this reference plane is snapping. Okay. And then you can trace this. How do you trace this? Well, you can go and create an extrusion, for example, and then just draw that shape in the panel. You do it once and then the panel is going to be repeated. 
So let's just draw an extrusion here. And I'm going to snap to these lines like this. And then I can draw the shapes inside. And here I'm going to finish with the extrusion just to show you something else. Now we can create those additional reference planes. And we can actually make them a grid inside. We can make this parametric if we want to. And we can use this to be able to trace in a better way. But yeah, something like this should be good enough. So then I'm going to go back and continue with my extrusion. And now what's important, and here you're going to see why um, why I drew these lines. So bear with me here. If we start with some kind of an edge that we draw here, Then when we have uh, these arrays, especially if we made them the correct way, we can use them as uh, tracing paper, as exactly what we did in school. So we can close this extrusion here. And then since this is going to be a seamless pattern, we better have something starting on the other side. So when we go to one end it is uh, really good if we just close that on the other side and right now I'm drawing kind of straight lines and I'm using these big grids and this might or might not be what we want to achieve. Now I have two loops and when I say close, this is going to be okay because it's an extrusion. If it is a sweep, we would need to do them one by one. And then I can continue here like this. Okay, so once we are happy with our extrusion shape, we can just finish here, see if all the lines are connected, and make that extrusion. We can assign a material, we can assign a thickness. Let's check it out in 3D. And I'm kind of happy with that. So now, remember, here we did that with the fixed dimensions of 2280 by 1800. And in the course I'm showing a slightly different way of uh, doing similar panels. I'm using sweeps to make them scalable. Uh, but it's a bit more complex, so no time for this now. Uh, the principle is pretty similar to this one though. So here I load that in our project. And here we can start with this wall. And I'm going to go and duplicate its type and name it Richie Alti. Okay. So we can make this a fixed distance and this one's also a fixed distance 
but the distance of the vertical grid is going to be 1800 and for the horizontal spacing is going to be 2280 and here we can actually select our curtain panel now now these messages that you saw can't make panels and substitute panels they happened because when we make the panels a fixed distance with an arbitrary sized wall here this one were not able to be created because this panel is not scalable it cannot stretch up and down and most of the time that's why people think that this kind of pattern when we need these ones here to stretch is only possible with uh, adaptive components but there is a uh, kind of a hack as i already mentioned using splines with as paths for sweeps we can make things kind of scalable it's still not the same as the adaptive but still they can stretch a bit but the whole point is to have them the same because they can all be manufactured from the same mold so we just need to make sure that this wall is with the right dimensions so the easiest thing is to make it 10 by if we decide to make uh, 10 panels this need to be 18 meters so let's uh, go and pick a calculator and we can just multiply this by let's say 8 so 14 400 and let's multiply this by 4 so 9 meters okay let's select the wall now and use this number here 9 12 0 9 12 0 like this and then let's go and make it 14 400 okay so now you can see that even though we changed the size those ones here stay the defaults even though we can select them and assign them to that one so they just lost their uh, type defined by the panel but we can always go and select all the panels on the host but now you can see that these are pinned we can unpin them select the family one and then we can pin them again to make them dependent on the type and this is it this is uh, how to create the Ricciotti style patterns that you see of course if you have more patience you can make bigger and more complex panels to hide the fact that this is a repeated panel because when you manufacture these this is um, coming from a mode so uh, they just uh, make them they just make the shape once and then they pour concrete and that that's all or the other option is to be just extruded Pre pretty much like making bricks so it doesn't matter too much if this has uh, a few curves here or 50 curves here it's just once this mold is made you can just pour in concrete and take it out pour in concrete and take it out and that's it uh, make sure to check out the discount code in the description uh, I did a much better job explaining this in the course than I did in this video now and I'm sorry about that just as I said 
third being to work all day and yeah check it out and the next video or maybe not exactly the next video but i'm certainly going to make a video on voronoi diagrams with dynamo uh, so stay tuned bye bye till the next time